What's up, guys? Team Stamp West, Discraft Underground Captain, and we are here with a little 2020 early season preview, prediction, rundown. Uh, full disclosure, we know we're a little bit biased. This is going to be a little Discraft centric. We follow those guys a little bit more, so we we know about uh, you know what they've been doing, and we're excited to follow them. So, full disclosure, be a little Discraft oriented here, and yeah. we're going to start with the Wintertime Open. And I think one of the biggest stories, if not the biggest story, is going to be Paul Macbeth. How does he come out after kind of this crazy offseason, being in the boot for several weeks? Uh, kind of unknown. Yeah, no, you're you're totally right. It's uh, an interesting look seeing him take off his boot, I think, this <laughs> week or last week and yeah. go straight into a tournament. It'll be interesting to see how he plays, but also to see how comfortable he is. What is yep. he looking like? What's his what's his essentially stature on the course? Obviously, he is Paul McBeth, so he's going to shoot well. But yep. how does that look coming out of the injury? Moving from there, I think the other big story on this one is going to be Adam Hammes with yep. the super hot start and then also looking at a repeat. Yeah, yeah, he took it down last year. He was in that big battle with uh, Austin Hannum. I think it came down to the last hole, and, and Austin Hannum had a pretty unfortunate uh, skip that hit, you know, went, went on the road, maybe got pulled a little bit wide, but uh, I think, you know, skipped into a spectator and essentially lost him the tournament. So mm -hmm. Adam Hammes, super hot start, won it last year. I, I got to say he's got to be the odds-on favorite, I think, to win this one, even with Paul there. Um not rating wise, but you know, as as a repeat and kind of Paul coming off a weird off season, um, I think you know Hammonds is probably an early season favorite for for this one. Uh, if we look at the FPO side, we got Mrs. Macbeth, Hannah playing on the FPO side, and uh, I know that there's been some talk about her, you know, really improving her game over this off season. We got to talk to her. It seems like she's taking it more seriously even than she has in the past and so i'm pretty excited to see hannah on this course and see how she does yeah you're yeah. you're totally right it's going to be really interesting to see how does she manage the switch especially as she's stepping out into a tournament she's played in the past and has done pretty well in mm -hmm. but what does it look like for her to make the switch from innova to discraft what discs are, is she throwing what does her bag look like how and, comfortable is she with those discs? How well does she know them yeah. on different angles? If you know, if it gets rainy or windy, uh, you know, a new bag becomes a little little tougher uh, on players. So super excited to see how she does. Oh yeah. So moving into Vegas, it's an interesting piece right now because it's no longer on the NT. So yep. some names aren't going to make the trip to Vegas that usually would, but it's also a really good test for some of the folks who are going to be there. The first name that comes to mind is definitely Haley King. Yeah. I think this is a pretty open course uh, from the coverage last year. You know, can be very windy, um, but I think Haley is a really good, uh, just, you know, stable disc thrower. Very good flat throw, something that does really well in the wind. Uh, she has good distance, but I think the big key is going to be her putting that she's been working on, uh, you know, religiously throughout the offseason here. And, I think this course is pretty open, you know, a lot of baskets on hills, um, a, lot of, a lot of difficult putts. And I think if she can putt really well, as it seems like she's been doing this offseason, I think she has a real chance to uh, come out and take this one. And, you know, you mentioned it's not an NT, but it's still a really huge event, oh, yeah. uh, probably the, the biggest women's field for these early tournaments. And I think this is one that Haley could could really do well at. Yeah. And, and like you said, she's been practicing. She's been in Southern California, focusing on her work. Uh, she's no longer worrying about school as much, so yeah. she's focused, and she had pretty much a real off season. So yeah. going to the men's side, we've got Hannum, Prez, and Terry Roethlisberger representing yeah. Discraft pretty much by themselves. It's a really cool opportunity. Presnell coming off a ESPN top ten ace from yeah. last year, and then Hannum coming off a really good season and early early season showing. And Terry, same thing, out of the Shelly Sharp, he's making waves. Yeah. Yeah, I think Terry's going to be a, a really interesting person to watch. This will be his first full year hitting the tour and really being out there, you know, playing disc golf full time, which makes a, a huge difference. I think we'll probably see a big jump in his rating throughout the year. And I, I think he's going to be one of those guys that 
uh, probably pops up a couple of times throughout the year, maybe on some film cards, uh, you know, potentially on some chase cards. But I think he's got a really good game to really good all around game, uh, especially being from the Midwest to potentially make some noises here. Totally, totally. So the last tournament we're going to talk about is probably the biggest tournament. It, it's arguably one of the biggest tournaments of the year, especially yeah. because it's the first big marquee event. Um, we've got a lot of big names at this. I think everybody is going to be there, but it's also a really big opportunity for Macbeth to get into his groove, right? So he's yeah. going to be getting comfortable coming off the injury. He'll have a tournament, a big tournament under his belt. This is a good chance for him to come out and kind of not to put the pun out there, but to put his foot down. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, this is a tournament that I think he really enjoys playing. Uh, I think he took third last year and has previously shot really well out here. This course obviously sets up really well for, for him. I mean, pretty much as every course does. So I think this is kind of where Paul starts to get in his groove a little bit more. Wintertime Open is kind of a you know, a little bit more fun warm-up tournament for him to get back in that competitive mode and, uh, you know, really dialing in all of his discs. But I'm really excited to see how he does out there. Um, I put him definitely as a favorite to win that one. Uh, but then we're also going to see team captain Paul Ulibarri out there uh, from Cholo, Arizona. He's been living up in the Pacific Northwest this offseason, but it sounds like he's still been playing. Uh, had the big surgery over the offseason. And so I'm going to be really curious to see how does Ulibar jump, jump back into things with this one. Yeah, I think it's a really good first tournament for him. It's a yeah. comfortable place. He's from Arizona. He's been playing this tournament forever. But it's a good opportunity for him to really take off and, and get, back onto the, get back onto the road. It's, it's a good tournament. And, and I think to, to the point of being a home course advantage – him being from Arizona, but Hamas, again, got to bring him up because he yeah. has been playing these courses for days, just yeah. on the course. Every single time I go on Instagram, he's on that course. So it'll be yeah. really cool to see how he comes out, how he is toned in this course. Yeah, I think, you know, I said Paul McBeth is going to be one of the favorites. I think Adam Hamas is the favorite for this tournament. And I think the first uh, tournament will be really telling, you know, if he comes out and wins the winter time open, then he's absolutely the favorite going into the Memorial. Um, even if he, even if he finishes top two or three at winter time, I think he's still the favorite going into the Memorial, but um, that one's going to be super exciting. I got to give a quick shout out to Austin Turner. Who's been having a good uh, early season over on the East coast. And it sounds like he's back to full health was battling some injuries last year. And I know this is a, a tournament that he enjoys as well. Um, I think it's a, maybe a good, good lefty course. Uh, I guess we'll see, but I think he's he's primed to have a good memorial tournament too. Uh, so we turn it over to the FPO side of things, and this is where we're finally going to get to see Paige Pierce in action. I'm I, I'm so excited for that one. Yeah, no, it's gonna be it's gonna be something special because she's played a few tournaments here and there early in the season, but not in the United States. It's a it's yep. a domestic debut. It's the opportunity for her to come out and show everybody what she's throwing how she's throwing it's going to be her first look with her first disc what yeah. does that look like how is she using that disc and how is she molding her bag to make sense and replacing some of those discs we got to know her to use yeah yeah i think this one's gonna be super interesting we'll really get a full scoop on what's in her bag and i think this course sets up well uh, i think the fierce is a good disc for for this course good neutral flying you're not going to get any crazy Flare skips on these fast greens. Um, we're going to see Missy Gannon at this one. Uh, I'm, I'm really excited to see how she does this year, too, as a new addition to Discraft. Uh, I've been following along with her offseason. Obviously, we had her on, too. And uh, I think, you know, this could be a good tournament for her to get up in that top four as well. Uh, I think they have a lot of raised baskets out there. But, you know, she has good distance, good all-around game. And she is a great putter. And I think uh, the putter is going to be a huge asset. For her out at the memorial you're, you're totally right so just some names that we didn't touch on in this highlight not to say they're not going to play well out there but tim barham does make the trip out to the west coast again he's been doing that trip pretty consistently making yeah. and going out there and, and really enjoying those those throws so him andrew presnell we did mention him but keep an eye out for him at the memorial 
And then yeah. finally, the person I really, I, I really wanted to talk about was Noah Osborne. He's not in any of these tournaments, I don't think, but he, he's an early season player that I, I want to see what he does making that switch from the underground team to the to the Discraft team, coming off that really big season last year. I think he's the he's the dark horse, if you will, for this season for me. Yeah. Absolutely. Noah's a phenomenal potter, great thrower, good all-around game. Uh, proved that with his AM World title. And I'm going to be really excited to follow along with him. Uh, I think he's hitting a lot of the Midwest, kind of South Midwest tournaments. Uh, so certainly keep a look, a look out for him to potentially make a little bit of noise on the MPO side of things, too. Awesome. So I think that's it for, for now. We, we've yep. got the three first tournaments covered, but I think we might be checking in with these tournaments and checking in with different players throughout the the rest of the season and it's really good to see the season come back around it's been a long off season yeah this one this one you know last season it felt like it flew flew by but this felt has felt like a, a reasonable good long off season here so i'm super excited to get back into some major tournaments and really follow along with some of these new team discraft players and see how this season plays out awesome so, so. we'll catch you next time